means liquid water should not be matter because mm. only solid objects are matter no then uh, i don't know the textbook definition i don't remember uh, anything okay anything that occupies okay give start giving me examples of matter okay like um water okay uh, minerals okay minerals gases okay around you i want three things from around you which you think are matter from around you uh uh, oxygen okay oxygen there's uh there's a plant okay the plant is your laptop matter or is it not matter uh it is laptop is the chair that you're sitting on yes the desk that your laptop is on yes okay uh, if there is a wall clock in your room, yep. a photo frames, okay. even the walls, even the walls, yeah. So anything, anything that occupies space and has mass is known as matter. Take it. So, yes. everything, everything around you having any of these things is known as matter. Now, if I take matter, I can divide it. I can divide matter into broadly two types, uh, three types. I'll come to the next uh, classification also. This is one type of a classification. Okay. It can be divided. Uh, I, I hope you have written this definition. Anything that yes, occupies space and mass, okay? Now, yes. matter can be divided into solids, okay, liquids, and gases. Now, if I look at, if I look at, let's say, the hardness, which according mm -hmm. to you is the hardest substance solid liquid or gases uh, solids okay this is the hardest the maximum okay this will have the minimum hardness okay and liquid would be intermediate to both of them okay yes. which one is rigid uh that means like easily movable right the rigid means something mm -hmm. that is uh, stiff, does not move. Oh, yeah, solids. Solids, okay. Yeah. Tell me something that is fluid. Fluid is something that can flow. Yeah, a uh, liquid. Yes, a liquid can flow. Can a gas flow? Yeah, it can. Yeah, it does flow. Okay. That is why it can go from one place to another place. Yes. Now, after that, uh, compressibility. Okay, compressible. Compressible means something that you can press and change the shape. Can you can you press, compress solids? Uh, no. No. Can you compress liquids? Yes. Uh, you should try doing that. Okay. Take some water in a glass and then try pressing it. It does not get compressed easily. Okay. Uh -huh. It does not. But the gas does get. You can take the whole room's gas and put it into a small box also. Liquids do not get compressed. I'll tell you why. Okay. Okay. If, if you look at the space between the atoms, mm -hmm. who has the maximum space between the atoms? Uh, the gas. The gas. Okay. Who has the minimum space? Solids. Okay. 
and liquid is between so if i if i look at it like this the solids the particles are generally squeezed like this okay so they cannot be compressed they do not have any space between them liquids have very less space between them if you bring them any closer they'll start repelling okay and gases have a huge space between them so gases are compressible but solids and liquids are not compressible to find out you know if liquid are compressible or not uh, you can uh, get a syringe okay in the syringe uh, block the outlet and then pour water into it and push try pushing the piston you'll see you'll not be able to push the piston mm. okay the syringe is like this a cylindrical shape and then there is that needle type of a thing and then there is a piston sort of a thing here you need to block this okay and then mm -hmm. pour the liquid here and try to push you'll see you'll not be able to push this this level does not change meaning it is mm -hmm. incompressible okay. okay now which one has the maximum attractive force uh, uh, what do you mean by attractive force between the particles like the, oh. these are the particles okay here the yeah. particles are there so which one which one will have the highest attractive force the solids liquids or gases solids yes that's the maximum and which one is the minimum uh, gases gases okay and liquid is always intermediate to both of them which one kinetic energy the is the energy that is due to motion okay so which one which one has the maximum kinetic energy the particles of gas liquid or solid gas right okay am i missing any other property here um no okay. i don't think so so you can jot this down yes i've written it all down Ay, shabash okay so this is this is one way of classifying matter now the other way of classifying matter the other way of classifying matter is matter can be classified as either pure substances or impure substances okay pure substances means they are made up of same type of atoms or molecules impure substances means that they are mixtures okay mm -hmm. now mixtures can be of two types okay mixtures can be of two types one is known as a homogeneous mixture the second one is known as a heterogeneous mixture okay now can you give me an example of a homogeneous mixture um wait like yes. a homogeneous is like salt and water exactly okay. and now okay why is this known as homogeneous why is salt and water known as homogeneous um because isn't it like two different yeah two sub no. two substances yeah. are mixed but the composition looks uniform okay throughout the mixture you cannot uh, you cannot state ki oh i can they there must be salt more here and water more here the composition is uniform you cannot distinguish where the salt is where the water is 
Now, mm -hmm. give me an example of heterogeneous composition. Um, mm, like anything, like it could be like, uh, for example, rocks and water, you can see. Yeah, Abby, Abby, there is snowfall in your place, snow and mud. You can easily yeah. separate them out, okay? So that is an example, that is also an example of heterogeneous mixture. Okay, so heterogeneous has a non-uniform composition. Okay. Okay, now, when, when substances are made up of the same type of atoms, when they are made up of the same type of atoms, they can be known as elements. Mm -hmm. Okay? And when the substances are made up of the same type of molecules or compounds, then they are known as the compounds. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. these elements, these elements can be broadly of three types. Metals, non-metals and metalloids okay okay now metals are substances which I'll, I'll give you the main definition okay any substance any element that can lose electron to become positively charged is a metal. Non-metal, any substance which has the ability to gain an electron and become negatively charged is a non-metal. And any substance which has properties between of metals and non-metals is known as a metalloid. Okay. Okay. So, yes. And let's try to squeeze compounds here also. Okay. Now, compounds can be of broadly two main types. One is our ionic compound. One is our covalent compound. Okay. Yes. So, this table is made? Yes. Okay. Now, now let's take a look at one side we'll put compounds and the other side we will put mixture. Okay. Okay. Abhi, Abhi, one difference we have already done between a compound and a mixture. A compound is a pure substance, okay, and a mixture is an impure substance. That is what we had done in the table. Yes. Now, I want another, another definition from you about a compound and a mixture. Um, so, compounds can be the same atoms and molecules? Not the, uh, yeah, the same atoms also and the same molecules. Okay, they are made up of same atoms or same molecules. Okay, so this is the second one out here. What can you say in terms of a mixture? Um, different uh, atoms or molecules. Okay. They are made up of different types of atoms or molecules. Okay. Now, which one is a physical change? Which one is a chemical change? Um, pure substances are the chemical change. Right. Okay. They are a chemical change. 
and formation of a mixture is a physical change. Yes. Now, which one, which one is reversible, which one is irreversible? Uh, the mixture is reversible. Okay, this is reversible and the compounds are irreversible. Okay, next question is, which one combines in simple whole number ratios chemically? Compounds? Yeah. The, the atoms or the elements combine chemically, they combine chemically in fixed ratio by mass. Okay, fixed ratio by mass. For example, for example, if I take water, okay, I take the water, uh, from that is made from ice or I take the water that comes from the RO, I take the water that comes from the tap, anywhere I take the water. The ratio of hydrogen and oxygen by mass will always be 1 is to 8. Means in any molecule of water, if there is 1 gram of hydrogen, there would be 8 grams of oxygen. Okay, that is the meaning of chemically, combined chemically in a fixed ratio by mass. Okay. okay. And mixture, that means it can be combined uh, in? Combined physically? Yeah, we have written that physical change. Yeah. It uh, can combine physically in? A fixed not, yeah. not fixed ratio. Yeah. Everybody takes salt and sugar according to their liking. Somebody mm -hmm. may like just, somebody may like tea without sugar. Someone may like only half a spoon of sugar. Someone may like two spoons of sugar in their tea. But all of them are mixtures. Okay. So they can be in any ratio by mass. Okay. okay, and yes, they are physically combined together. Now, mm -hmm. in which one do you expect a large change of energy, a compound or a mixture? A compound? Yes, a compound has a large change of energy. Okay, whereas a mixture generally is involves lower change of energy and in fact in some there are many cases the way you will not find any change of energy like the mixing of gases around you the mixing the gases around you is also a mixture they are continuously mixing you are breathing in you are breathing out the carbon dioxide is continuously mixing with the air that is around you but then yes. that is not changing the energy much out there Okay, now uh, one more, one more, one more, one more compounds, mixtures, uh, lower change of energy. Ah, uh, yeah. In which one does the properties get altered? Um, the compound. Yes, properties are different than the one we started with. Okay, properties are different than the one we started with. Here, the properties are same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now, if I look at, if I look at a physical change, what is happening in a physical change? Okay. Our solid is there. When you heat a solid, what happens to that solid? Um, it uh, melts or decreases in size. Hmm? Liquid. Can it? Solid? It becomes a liquid. Yeah. <laughs> right. It becomes a liquid, <laughs> and when you heat a liquid, what happens to it? 
Uh, it becomes a gas. Okay, it becomes a gas. But when you cool a gas, what does it become? A uh, liquid. And when you cool a liquid, what does it become? A solid. Okay. Now this 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 is a classic example of how matter is changing in a physical change. Okay. But then there is there is one kind of a substance which directly changes from a solid to a gas or gas to a solid. These type of substances are undergoing the process of sublimation. Okay. Now, what is the name of the process from solid to liquid? When a substance is changing from solid to liquid, what is that process known as? Um, solid melting. Melting, yeah, it is known as melting. And liquid to gas? Uh, boiling. Yes, boiling. Okay. And then gas to liquid? vaporization the boiling and the vaporization are the same vaporization oh. is the formation of vapors um oh free uh freezing no wait no Fre i don't remember freezing is here liquid to solid yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh. when it is very cold and when you do ha on the mirror, what do you see? Like, um, if you, if you do on see? the, yeah, like, and you, yeah. then you see droplets of water forming there. Yeah. What is that known as formation of droplets of water on the screen or the mirror or anywhere? Uh. Condens hmm? Condensation? Yeah, condensation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this topic is also clear? The physical change? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Now, let's look at the other, other type of matter that we had st stated. The metals. Okay. Whatever property, one property I gave you about the metals that they are elements that have the ability to lose electrons and become positively charged. What yes. else do you know about metals? Um, uh, that they can also conduct electricity. Yeah, they are good conductors of electricity. As well as heat, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now the next property. Oh, um, I'm not sure. Hmm. Anything? Look at the metals around you. In the kitchen, you get aluminum foil. Okay, how is that aluminum foil made? By beating them up into sheets. A small piece of aluminum is taken and it is kept on, you know, they kept keep on hammering it till the time it does not become a very thin sheet. That property of a metal is known as malleability. So metals are malleable. Oh. Okay. The yes. electrical wires that you have, what are they made up of? Uh, copper. Yeah, and that's a metal. So metals mm -hmm. can be converted into wires because they are ductile because they are ductile okay? okay now now if you have 
a metal metallic object around you and a non metallic object around you try hitting both of them and listen to the sound mm -hmm. Uh, hmm? Wait, what? Which produced the ringing sound? Oh, um, the metals because they conduct heat. The metals produce a ringing sound, and that property is known as sonorous. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are what sonorous? They have a ringing sound. That is why in the olden days, when electric bells were not there. People used to use these metallic bells for as bells. Abibi, you'll see uh, the bells that are tied around the cows and all in the farms. You'll see that they yeah. are made up of metals because they produce that sonorous sound. Oh, okay? okay. So they are malleable, they are ductile, they are sonorous, they conduct electricity. Okay, what can you say about the melting and boiling points? Is it high or low? Uh, for metals, the melting point is high. Yeah, the melting point and boiling point is pretty high. Okay, and then, okay, a conductive malleability, ductile, sonorous, melting point. Uh, okay. Do metals have a special type of a shine you look at any kind of a metal okay the rings that people wear they have a particular shine the frames the utensils all of them have a particular type of a shine that is known as what lustre okay that the substance has a lustre so metals have a lustre. Okay. Okay. Now, now let's come to let's look at let's look at non-metals. Mm -hmm. Now, non-metals are what? Non-metals are what? They are not malleable. Okay, they are non malleable. They cannot be beaten into sheets. Non metals okay. cannot be drawn into wires, so it is non ductile. Non metals are not sonorous, they cannot produce that ringing sound. Okay, non metals are poor conductors of electricity and heat yeah okay and then the first one that we had written is the non-metals have the ability to gain electrons to become negatively charged okay yes. so what what are the other things that we have out here okay non metals can be uh, can be in the form of solids or gases can you name a liquid non metal uh wa water mm, that is not a non metal that is a compound uh I'm not sure. Bromine. Okay. Uh, Bromine is a liquid one. Now, we know that non-metals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Name a, a what do you say, a non-metal which is a good conductor of electricity. Hmm. It is an allotrope of carbon. I'm not sure. Graphite. 
okay graphite rods are used even in the batteries and all to conduct electricity mm. okay non metals are not supposed to be hard substances but one of the hardest substances one of the hardest substances known is a non metal which is again made up of carbon just like graphite this is now we are doing the exceptional case uh hardest substance is diamond right yeah so diamond is also made up of carbon so one form of uh, carbon is graphite another form of carbon is diamond okay non metals do not have a luster they do not have that shine like the metal but there are some non metals which have the luster uh even diamonds have luster right yeah both the things that we have written out here diamond has graphite has okay the other one is iodine has okay so the ones written in the brackets are the exceptional cases okay now okay. <clears throat> let's come here and write down their exceptional cases now name a metal that is soft not hard soft metal which can be easily cut with a knife sodium okay sodium and potassium uh, are so soft that they can be cut with a knife oh uh, okay okay name a liquid metal a liquid metal name starts with an m magnesium no it is used in thermometers mm -hmm. oh mercury yeah mercury okay so liquid metal is here okay that's i think so that does it okay so mm -hmm. have you jotted these things down yes i have okay so we have the metals non metals and what else did we do solids liquids gases the physical changes and the chemical changes compounds mixtures and yes states of matter basically okay perfectly fine so mm -hmm.